every Sunday on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook Live, so hit the switch. Got Scrob looking up those unknown facts. Helpful as heck, there's a lot for that. Lost the bet, I need a pie. Pepperoni, it tastes so fly and it feels so good to play these games. Game Gear Links and GBA, Turbo Graphics, Neo Geo, Retro Consoles, looks so neat. I got 10 power strips for the Sig CD. To play Sewer Shark in the dark, that's me. It's downright fierce, get your game on. Downright fierce, get your game on. Four. My Xbox 2, I played more on my NES and Master System. Love Mario so much, I almost kissed him. Town, town is city, Brandon said, but it's okay. What he meant instead is in this world, all is possible. Like Super Smash Bros, platform optional, Echo Fighters, here we go. A lot to address on the awesome show. Simon Belmont, the Splatoon crew, Sonic Yoshi, and Pikachu. Friendship games and stories too. With some magical world, come join the dudes. Passionate guys with a love for games. Got downright fierce going hard today. It's downright fierce, get your game on. Downright fierce. Get your game on, down right fierce, get your game on. Down right fierce. Down right fierce. Hello and welcome to episode 95 of Downright Fierce Gaming, America's of course that started breaking before the podcast started podcast. My name is Josh Sensio. With me is my slutty cat Mishka. I, I, so I did something stupid before the, the show started. I tried to... I, I forgot to turn off a couple of internet hogging things, uh, you know, bandwidth hogging things while we were streaming which cut off the the stream and then uh, i guess that pissed off obs and obs was like oh hey i'm not gonna start the intro when you play it uh so it's just i click the button and it's just me going which for the uh audio listeners is, is a really silly face Anyways, just me tonight, uh, nobody else could make it, and everybody's all busy watching movies and having lives and working, uh, but Mishka can make it, I'm really happy, oh, okay, you're just gonna hang out there? She's gonna leave. Anyways, uh, we're gonna talk about video games today, cause that's what we do every Tuesday. Uh, let's start with Fierce News. Mishka, you get get your butt out of here. Just just get. All right. First thing is uh, Dead Island 2, a game everybody was pretty much sure was never going to come out. Uh, it was announced, but, I mean, everyone was pretty confident this game's dead because it was announced a long time ago. Uh, I want to say, when was it? Do I have it here? I do not. I want to say 2013. I want to say 2013 it was announced. Uh, well, it turns out uh, that it is apparently still in development. During a THQ Nordic financial report call, CEO Lars Wingefors said, quote, Dead Island 2 is still being worked on. Stay tuned. So I know this is kind of silly, but it's one thing to say it's still being worked on and then just leave it at that. I can't help but focus on the words stay tuned. Stay tuned usually implies that something's about to happen, that more news to follow in a relatively, you know, soonish kind of way. Uh, Dead Island 2 was announced at E3, and I'm kind of thinking that uh, maybe. I'm going to actually, I'm going to even go, so I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to say that we get a release window and gameplay footage at E3 this year uh, for Dead Island 2. I think it's going to happen. And this game, I mean, freaking Dead Island is, <laughs> well, for those of you who don't know, it's one of my favorite games. I actually, I Tristan, one of our co-hosts uh, from Jacksonville, one time bet me that I couldn't play Dead Island 
for 24 hours straight. And I did. And I beat it, obviously. Not obviously, but I, I beat it. I love that game. Dead Island is a fantastic game. With all its flaws, a fantastic game. Um, Dead Island 2, I'm a little worried that it has been taking them this long to work on it. But I think that I think that's good things. I mean, I, I, I think... I think there's something to that because uh, the same team is making. Uh, well, I don't know if it's the same team. I know it's uh, actually, yeah, Quicksilver or something. I think yeah, they're making a, a sequel. It's kind of like Dead Island, uh, Dead something, Dead Air, Dead shit, Dying Light, Dying Light. Uh, they're making Dying Light 2, which we also, also haven't heard about, uh, from in a while. But Dying Light 2 is going to be dope. I think Dead Island 2 is going to be good. Uh, Wing of Force also noted that THQ Nordic has a massive number of announced and unannounced games in development, saying, quote, In total, we have 80 games under development, where 32 are announced and 48 unannounced. Uh, so some of the announced games are Kingdom Come Deliverance, Royal Edition, Dead Island 2, uh, Shenmue 3 and Wasteland 3. So we know that those are things that are happening. Uh, some of the unannounced projects are coming from War, uh, War Horse Volition, which I'm going to say Saints Row because I think they worked on Saints Row. I'm going to say it's going to be Saints Row. Uh, Coffee Stain North, I don't know what that is, and 4A Games, don't know what that is either. Um, that's pretty freaking... Actually, I don't know if that's impressive because, I mean, it's not like they're developing them themselves. They're, I mean, they're a publishing company, but still, I mean, that's a lot of freaking games. So, I don't know. That's good. That's good, though. Uh, moving on. Uh, no surprise to learn that Cyberpunk 2077 will have gameplay at E3. Uh, you know, they had it a la last year at E3. They're probably going to... We can pretty much figure that they were going to have uh, gameplay at this one. Uh, but according to Marcin Momo, uh, global community lead at CD Projekt Red, you're not allowed to play it. You're not allowed. You can't play it. You can't play with us, is what Marcin Momo, which I'm assuming that's what it is. M O M O T. Mamet? Momo. Um, he recently tweeted, quote, To answer many questions about the demo and whether or not Cyberpunk will be playable at E3, we are going to be hosting gameplay presentations. Games, uh, game played by us, in parentheses, in that cinema. So. They're doing gameplay. And this kind of goes against what I originally predicted because because they said, uh, actually, I have it right here. Uh, CEO, uh, yeah, CEO Adam Kaczynski said that E3, this is back in March, said that E3 was, quote, going to be the most important one ever for us. We have really prepared a strong show. So I was saying that they're going to have gameplay, that we're going to be able to play, you know, Cyberpunk. I mean, that kind of makes sense. And now he's saying that, yeah, you're going to see gameplay, uh, but it's going to be played by us, you know, no hands on. It's going to be hands off. And that kind of worries me because a hands off demo typically, typically, I mean, not 100% of the time, but like I'd say at least 90% of the time means that it's a vertical slice. Now, if you don't know what a vertical slice is, it's basically they design, they take all the elements of the game and they build a singular game with those elements. So let's say, uh, let's compare it to a pizza. So you have a video game, which is a pizza. You know, you have your toppings, you have your cheese, you cook it all at the same time, and you, you know, you, you make your pizza. Now, let's say that you wanted to make a pizza that was representative of your pizza. Uh, you take some of the ingredients. Before you cook it, you take some of the, you know, the dough and, and a little bit of cheese and you put the perfect amount of cheese, you put the perfect amount of tomato sauce and, and, and toppings or whatever. And this little slice, this little indication of what your bigger pizza is going to look like is going to be the best piece. It's going to taste better than the entire pizza because it is specifically is handcrafted and it, you can kind of, you know, manage the quality when working with a small thing like that. Now, with a big video game and a big pizza, you kind of run into problems, you know, with the bigger size. And, you know, it's a vertical... 
basically vertical slices are rarely indicative of what the game is. A great example is 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 Watch Dogs. You look back at E3 2013. I want to, actually it was 13 because PS4 came out 2014. I think I'm gonna say yes. Um, so Watch Dogs, you know this PS4 game that's gonna be coming out. You know their E3 was insanely impressive. I mean you look at the light. They they had the most impressive lighting and, and shootout scene. I mean it was it was insane looking. It was like this is this is this is next gen. You know this is this is the future. This is gonna be amazing. And the game was didn't even look like that at all. I mean, not not, a, not at all, but it was definitely on a scale from one to ten of graphics. That being a ten, what they showed at E three being a ten, they brought it back down to like a seven. They scaled it back a lot. Same thing happened with the division. You know, they promise a lot of things and they show a lot of things, and it's not happening. So this guy's saying we're gonna have a very strong show and we have a hands off demo. That kind of makes me worried because it's like why aren't why aren't we going hands on? Why isn't it why isn't it impressive enough at this point to show off? I mean, even I don't know. Jamie says this analogy is delicious. I think so. I'm worried though because I mean this is the most anticipated game announced right now. Now that Kingdom Hearts three is Kingdom Hearts three is out. Uh, you know, this is the most anticipated video game of the entire industry. Maybe you could argue Death Stranding would be. Actually, yeah, that one's pretty. Okay, as far as video games that most people have confidence in, this is the highest one. This is the No Man's Sky of this current industry as as it stands. And we can end up with an actual No Man's Sky situation where it's a lot of promise and just, you know, nothing. It's just, it's not, not, not living up to, you know, the hype. Or we can maybe end up with something incredible, like what they promised No Man's Sky would be. Like what they showed it would be in the, you know, when they were, you know, yeah, you get what I'm saying. And uh, Jamie actually has a good, good analogy. She says, uh, vertical slice equals flattering Facebook profile pic. It's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Imagine if, I mean, and, and you, you need that, though. You need a good vertical slice for a video game because, just like a Facebook profile pic, if everybody's Facebook profile pic was a video, which you have that option, by the way. Most people don't do it because... You look way better in a picture than you do a video. Vertical slice. Vertical slices are important. They, they, you know, they build hype for a game. I mean, look at Rage 2, which I beat, by the way, and it was fantastic. Um, you look at Rage 2, and that's a game that... Uh, most lost my mouse. That's a game that also showed a very impressive vertical slices and, 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 you know, trailers and stuff. And the ultimate game was still very good, but you know, that kind of brought me into the, the vertical slices and the, the trailers and stuff brought me like the appropriate level of hype going into that game and had, it was a good payoff. It was all right. Let's move on. Speaking of investor calls, uh, Sony recently confirmed some good news. Sony's confirmed that The Last of Us Part 2, Death Stranding, and Ghosts of Tsushima are definitely coming to PS4. Uh, so, I mean, that doesn't obviously mean... That obviously doesn't mean that they're they're not going to release a separate SKU for PS5. That would just be stupid. Of course they're going to do that. Uh, but it's still good to see that they're not leaving PS4 users behind. Now, this seems like an obvious thing because PS4 is sold stupidly well. But it, it, it may not be as... I mean, look, look at Sony's track record. Sometimes they don't do things which should be obvious, you know. Um, they could easily have gone like, you know, uh, you know, fuck you guys. We're going to, you know, if you, you, you're really excited for Death Stranding, well, buy a PS5. Man, it's 500 bucks. Get a second job. Um, according to Jim Ryan, president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, quote, for the next three years or so, PS4 will be the engine of SIE's engagement and uh, probability as we seek to keep the existing 
owner base engaged and, de and delighted and attract new owners from different markets and different demographics. Uh, in this, we will be massively helped by an outstanding roster of new and exclusive games that have yet to be launched. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it, it makes sense, but it's, it's nice to hear them say it, you know? It's like being in a relationship where you've already said I love you with a person and they and this is not like I'm not like revealing anything of my life just so you know I'm just I'm I really like metaphors. Uh you know you you've already said I love you and then you just don't say I love you anymore. Again, my wife and I we say we I love you all the time to each other. We do. But um just because you know the person loves you you know, sometimes it's just nice to hear it. So, Sony, I love you too. Thank you for not leaving us PS4 users in the dust because, you know, there's a lot of consoles. I mean, like this generation, I got the PS4 uh, within a, you know, first generation. Uh, last generation, it was the 360 I got, you know, within first generation. Uh, and then before that, PS to so i mean like what i'm saying is i usually i i pick one console and i get that console pretty early in the life cycle uh you know if there's a reason to i'll get i'll get both but usually i can you know like most people only can afford one um and i just i have a terrible feeling that the ps5 is going to be 500 bucks i just I think it's going to be $500 and I have a PS4 pro. So I think that my, you know, Ghost of Tsushima and death stranding and all that. And last of us part two will be optimized enough to where I can have a comparable experience. Uh, and still enjoy it while I also have my Xbox console, because I have a feeling that I'm going to be switching over to Xbox this generation. I'm telling you after E3 watch, I think a lot of you are going to be saying the same thing. I think we're all going to be Xbox users. I think that the next generation Xbox will be as successful as this generation's PS4. Now, the reason why it's going to, this is going to be because the PS5, although it's going to be an extremely powerful console, is going to be overpriced. I think it's going to be 500 bucks. And, you know, while it's nice that they're not going to take Ghost of Tsushima and all these games away from PS4 owners... They're also a little bit shooting themselves in the foot, kind of. I mean, they're respecting their customers, so they're not really shooting themselves in the foot. But it's because those games are coming to PS4 that I'm not getting a PS5 right away. Now, they could still surprise us. They could say, hey, you know, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn 2, PS5. Or they can do a nice thing, you know, a friendly thing, and say, hey... Horizon Zero Dawn 2, PS5, and PS4. I don't think that's outside of the realm of possibility. I think that can actually happen. Andrew wants to know, uh, Face Kicker wants to know, what exclusive content for Xbox? That's the thing. I, I don't think that X... Well, we don't know yet. They got all these amazing studios and stuff. I think they're going to... I think they're going to have a lot to talk about during E3 this year. But I think the biggest thing is... They are going to be jumping on the train that... Actually, we have a couple of stories. Oh, yeah, actually, the next... Nope, second after the next story we're going to talk about. Um, streaming, game streaming, and most important, even more specifically, forget the game streaming part, uh, game subscriptions. You know, being able to digitally to download games, like, you know, like Game Pass. You know, things like that where you can you know, have an access to access to a lot, you know, large library of, of games. Um, that I'm, I think that's what Microsoft is going to announce with their next generation, that they're going to say, this is our focus. We are going to, you know, be the place where, you know, it, it, I, I hate to say it, but like quantity over quality in a very, very few areas. I think that actually quantity over quality is better. Perfect example, Netflix, Hulu, all those things. Are there ever really that many movies on there that you're like, oh, shit, they got this movie? I mean, yeah, they had Infinity War. You know, they're, they're getting uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. You know, they, they will have a handful of those. And I think that's what Microsoft's going to have. They're going to have a handful of like, oh, shit, I really want that. And then a whole bunch of, 
Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, 40 year old virgin. Nice. You know, Pineapple Express. Cool. Other Judd Apatow movies. Uh, you know, things that you're going to see on there and be like, oh shit, I haven't played uh, Dark Sector in forever. Nobody knows Dark Sector. I love Dark Sector. Uh, I, you know, oh shit, Dark Sector. Yeah, I'll play that for a little bit. And you don't finish the game, but you know what? You're happier about spending your $10 a month on Game Pass because you got to have a little bit of enjoyment with an old game that you enjoyed. And if you haven't played Dark Sector, you should because it's really good. But I think that's I think that's where Microsoft is going to pick it up. That's, that's, I think that's why everybody's going to get Microsoft console is because... Of Game Pass because of Project X Cloud, you know, and I think they're smart too. I realized because I got Game Pass for for PC because it was a dollar for like three months, and I'm like, oh shit! Well, now I definitely don't need a console. Now I definitely don't need a freaking Xbox because you know I could get the same thing on my PC. There's like 20 games. <laughs> There's like 20 games for for the PC, and they're good games. It's like State of Decay, Forza Horizon 4, Gears of War 4. Sea of Thieves, um, you know, they, they've got some some pretty decent games on there. They got Wargroove, they got Wargroove on there. Um, but the console is going to be where it's at, and that's where they should keep it too. And I think that this E3, they're going to make their big push, and they're going to be the best value. Best value. PS5 is going to be the best console. It's going to be the best console. It's going to, you know, those load times are going to be sick. Uh, you know, PS5 is going to have the best exclusives. They're going to have Spider Man. They're going to have all that stuff. But Microsoft will be the best value. They already currently are. But I think it'll be value with additive, added exclusives, which I they don't have now, but I think they're about to have. Um, and Andrew says exclusive sell consoles. That's true. That is true. hundred percent. Uh, which is why I, I, and I think they know that too. I think that's why they bought up all these con country countries, companies. Uh, you know, I, I think they're, I, uh, especially, uh, obsidian, you know, I think obsidian is going to give them something real sexy to show off at E3, you know? The problem is, is that these are probably going to be, probably, probably going to be um, new IPs, um, which, you know, you really got to, you know, hit a home run with that one. You really have to just hit it on every single quantifiable level to sell a, a new IP that well. You know, you got to make a Horizon Zero Dawn to make it a, a console seller. Um, and I don't necessarily know if they're going to have that. But I think that combined with both things, I think that when people sit down and they go, okay, well, I could spend $500 on a PS5. Uh, or I can get a PS, I can keep my PS4, still play games that are coming out for the PS5. Well, forget that part. 500 bucks for a PS5, amazing exclusives. Handful of exclusives, to be fair, but amazing exclusives. Or this $200, $300 streaming box uh, that just, I mean, it basically comes with, for 10 bucks a month, hundreds of games. So a kid sees I can have my PS5 and maybe two games or my Xbox and hundreds of games. That's what I think is, is going to sell it. That's what I think is, is going to, yeah. Oh God. Oh God. There's okay. All right, let's move on. Um, according to a leak, we may have learned the title of the next call of duty game. So get this the fourth modern warfare game. This is going to be the fourth Modern Warfare game, okay? Because the next game is going to be Modern Warfare. The last one was Black Ops. This is Modern Warfare. The fourth one in the series is going to be called Call of Duty Modern Warfare. That's it. It's called Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The fourth Call of Duty, and, and not to be confused with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. 
Because that's what that game was called. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. No, no, this is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Two completely separate different games. This is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4 Modern Warfare. <laughs> According to Kotaku's Jason Schreier, it's going to be a soft reboot of the series. Uh, which I just, I don't get. Like, it, the Modern Warfare, actually none of the Call of Duties really had a memorable story all the way through. They had incredible set pieces. They had incredible moments. Like, insane moments. I still remember that, that yeah, I mean, of course, the scene where, you know, the, the guy who's been training you, he shoots you and stuff. Uh, you know, that, that's an incredible scene. And there's this in Modern Warfare 2, when they dropped the bomb and, and, you know, you're, you're going through a dilapidated, you know, Washington after your helicopter crashes. Yeah. There are some insanely incredible moments. Uh, no Russian where you're shooting up the airport. Don't get me wrong. Not saying that there aren't forget, aren't unforgettable moments in Modern Warfare and amazing set pieces. Yes. But I challenge you right now. Tell me the entire plot synopsis of one Modern Warfare game. Of any Call of Duty game. You have, uh, you have 15 seconds. Go. I'm not going to wait here for 15 seconds. But you know, you know what I'm saying. Come on. No. You don't know it off the top of your head because they're not memorable. It's, oh, you know, this uh, guy... Uh, you know, he's, uh, and it's all, it's always vignettes too. It's like little vignettes that go into a big story. It's like, okay, so the government, uh, there's, I don't, I can't even, I can't even fabricate something T insert spy movie here, insert political thriller here. That's all it is. And she says, call of duty. Who cares? Um, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I was, and I was going to say. Andrew, the yes, Call of Duty, Call of Duty two and one, and World War two. We know the plot synopsis, sure. But ah, wait, hold on, uh, do, do, blah, blah. We know the environmental stuff, the uh, you know g general, you know uh, what, 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 what am I trying to say? Uh, environment, general environment, um, the setting. <laughs> the setting yeah that's the setting that's the story of the setting that's not the story that we're following nobody knows nobody actually knows it's a little trivia fact nobody actually knows what a call of duty game is about all right so let's move on to oh so exciting news i am really really excited about this let's add Together, let's add another company entering the streaming slash digital marketplace. One that I actually predicted a long time ago. When we first started talking about this, when we first started talking about streaming and 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 you know subscript game subscription services, you know, I, I, I threw out this idea and I don't know. I have no idea what episode it was. We're, we're almost at 100, you guys. I have I tried to find it. I, I could not find it. But when we first started talking about all this stuff, I said, you know what company really needs to get on board with just like you pay them like 10 bucks a month and you get access to their entire library? Motherfucking Ubisoft. Of course why wouldn't they uh so first of all the ubisoft store recently leaked a placeholder image revealing an unannounced service called ubisoft pass uh ubisoft is absolutely i mean that's all we know that's actually the end of the story they it was a placeholder on their website for for uh for uh um for like an image and stuff and then they they took it down it, all we know is that there's something on their site called ubisoft pass premium um, but this is absolutely a subscription service I would invest in. Like, imagine getting the entire library of Assassin's Creed, uh, the Prince of Persia games, old Prince of Persia games, Splinter Cell, which they're definitely going to be having another one pretty soon, uh, Rainbow Six, all the, like, the Tom Clancy games. I mean, not all of them, but a lot of them. Actually, maybe all of them. I think Ubisoft owns Tom Clancy. Uh, the Division, eh? uh, For Honor, Far Cry, Watch Dogs, like, 
Now, I'm not going to say Rayman, you know, that's whatever, but dude, that's assuming that it's well priced. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm t- take my money. I love Ubisoft. Ubisoft makes great freaking games. I don't care what anybody says about games like The Division or, you know, how how you feel about, you know, the first Far Cry. I like Ubisoft games. I like the way they're made. Andrew says hard pass. And David uh, Osteen says, imagine all the Vidya games. There's so many Vidya games. Uh, Andrew, you know what? Actually, I already know the answer. And I, I, not only do I know the answer, I know exactly how you said it. Hard pass. Just, and then no, just. No. I, and I, I know why, because you're an RPG guy and I get it. You know. I think you... Oh, no, you did try Assassin's Creed. I believe we were talking about that the other day. Um, but still, I love Ubisoft games. I want to see... I want to I get all the... I want to get... I want to get all the Ubisoft games. I also want to get some water. So here we go. All right. Moving down. Two. Panic... Oh, my God. Panic Inc. Okay. Uh, this is company who published Firewatch and uh, the upcoming uh, Untitled Goose Game. They they recently they made the most easily the most bizarre story announcement or whatever of the entire year, possibly a couple of years. It's called Playdate. Playdate. One word, P-L-A-Y-D-A-T-E, Playdate. It is a sickening yellow handheld game system featuring a directional pad, two A-B buttons, so like two buttons and one's A, one's B, and a crank, like a like a crank on the side of it. Uh, the crank does not power the device, which at first that's what I thought. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, no. Crank does not power the device. It's another way of controlling games. You know, because that's the one thing gamers have been wanting for so long. It's like, man, this game would be so much better if there was like a crank system. Like fishing. By the way, there's no fishing game. Wait, is there? They should have one. And they don't. They don't even have a fishing game and they have a crank on the side of it. By the way, the screen... Is 2.7 inches with a 400 by 240 resolution black uh, black and white, by the way. Black and white resolution. So this thing is like about, for audio listeners, I'm sorry. It's like about like... It's, it's, it's like this. It's like this big. Don't actually... Oh, I got a thing right here. Here. Look. 2.7 inches. That's the screen. I think they do it diagonally. So that's the, that's the screen. And you hold it like this. It's a tiny little thing. Now, I, I just realized, here I am. Here I am. I'm kind of, a, I'm kind of doing a... Oh, my God. So many comments. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> uh, David says, what kind of sickening yellow? It's, it's like he's, snot or Ford Mustang. It is the color of snot when you are sick. <laughs> bright yellow uh for shame no fishing games uh everyone wants to know how there's no fishing games <laughs> okay so here i am getting all upset and you don't know why i'm getting upset you have no idea because here's the thing if i told you or if somebody told me that that's coming out for anything under than 30 dollars, i'd be like yeah yeah 30 bucks you know and under why not? It sounds fun. It sounds like a, you know, an interesting little, you know, haha thing that will give you minutes of fun. And then you lose it in your drawer forever. But no. This is coming out in 2020 for $150. And we'll have 12 games included. 
Uh, they're calling it a season. Like it's like a season of games that that are coming out. I don't know if they're gonna have season two. I don't know how you get it because there's no Ethernet port or anything on there. Maybe there's a Wi-Fi thing. I don't know. But oh, who is this for? Who spends a hundred and fifty dollars on something that is underpowered from your phone? Has twelve games on it that are all black and white. And and some of them that you control with a crank? What? It's like something you see at freaking CVS hanging in the, the impossible to open plastic wrap things that your grandma gets you because she thinks she's getting you a Nintendo Switch. Like, oh, here's a Game Boy. Like, what? Who is going to buy this? Jamie wants to know, does the crank fold in or just stick out? Nope, just sticks out. Just sticks out. Um, and and Jamie wants to know: Is this real question or uh, how is this practical? No, no, it's practical. Like the system itself would be awesome if it was like twenty bucks. I would actually buy it if it was twenty bucks. Thirty maybe a little bit steep, but twenty bucks you can fit it right in your pocket. You bust it out on the train, just mess around with this. You know, it's kind of fun and do a little crank thing. Okay, it's novel, whatever. Uh, for like twenty bucks, yeah totally down for this but a hundred and fifty dollars i have no idea i don't know a gamer that will spend a hundred and fifty dollars on this i don't know a single gamer i don't know a single one even i and i know gamers who are wealthy who buy games just because they love buying games who just buy like every new game that comes out i don't know who buys this so now we know oh the games let's let's talk about the games right uh, we know four of the games that are coming out. Bennett Foddy presents Zipper. Kranken's Time Travel Adventure. Wait. Oh, no, we know three of the games? Or did I not write the fourth game? Well, I think maybe... Okay, 360, I think, might be one of... Yeah, 360 is one of the games, I think. And Executive Golf DX. That just sounds like a mobile game. That just sounds crazy. Uh, so this next part is ripped straight from IGN. Because uh, I just, I, I didn't know how else to, to share this information with you. So I'm just, I'm just going to rip it straight from IGN. Panic also shared a GIF on Twitter demonstrating how the system works with time travel adventure. Where a wind-up man is late for a hot date and needs to be cranked up to get there in time. However... Players need to time his movements to get there safely. And if he's late, a wind-up woman suplexes him. That's the entire game. I saw it. Like, you... And it's novel. It's pretty cool. If you... Again, if you told me this was 20 bucks, I'd be like, Oh, dude, that's that's pretty awesome. You know, you turn the crank and then he moves in black and white. Don't forget, moves on a tiny little screen that you're playing like this. And then, like, depending on how you go and you can also reverse it. And you're gonna have him go for like that, and then depending on how he moves or whatever, like you have to get there by a certain time. For twenty bucks, sure, but a hundred and fifty goddamn dollars? I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't know. Jamie says, "I meant how is the crank practical?" Uh... I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. Um, and then, you know, some podcasts have been talking about how people might buy it because it'll be worth some, mon some money someday because they're not making that many. Uh, in order for something to become a collectible, you don't, you know, rarity doesn't, isn't the only determining factor. Like you need also demand. And I don't know anybody who would get nostalgic over this thing. Like, I just, I don't know. I, again, I don't know who, who would buy it. And those people will probably still have them. <laughs> the people who buy it, they're like, oh, I love my, my play date. Just also a dumb name. All right, let's move on. Um, speaking of bad ideas, next month, the Ouya will officially be shutting down. So this is actually a pretty scary look at uh, the risks of owning digital-only software. You know, I've been saying that we're moving towards the digitally-only future. 
you know, this is, this shows the risk of it. Now, that being said, I'm going to make myself perfectly clear. And anytime somebody starts arguing with you and saying, digital only future is scary, you know, like, it's the digital apocalypse. Remind them this. This isn't going to happen with Sony, Microsoft, or Google. Apple, Amazon, all these services. Your digital goods are safe. By the time they're not safe, it's going to be when they have when Apple has the same, uh, you know, uh, market value name value as IBM. I, you know, you know by that point that things are kind of not good for them, just by name name value alone. And by that point, you've already moved on. You don't even subscribe to their goods anymore. You don't even need them anymore. So you, it's fine. Don't let this discourage you from buying things digitally. This is, this is, there's a different lesson to be had with this story. So according to Razer's FAQ, one of the re- question reads, quote, will I still be able to play games on Ouya? And the reply is, quote, you will be able to play games via the Ouya platform until June 25th, 2019. Once it has been shut down, access to the Discover section will no longer be available. Games downloaded that appear in play may still function if they do not require purchase validation upon launch. Contact the game developer for confirmation. So basically, when you buy digital games or really just anything digital, uh, it needs to connect to the Internet every now and then to refresh the DRMs. It's the digital rights to you know, the product that you bought. And again, you don't tech, you didn't technically buy a product. You're kind of like leasing it like a one payment lease where, you know, they can basically take it back at any point. It's in your user agreement. They could just say, you don't own it anymore. And just take it away from you. You have certain rights. Uh, like, uh, for example, if you, um, if you buy the digital, if you bought the digital rights to Scrub Seasons, I think like two, uh, you get those episodes with the original music. They actually had to change some of the music in like the later Netflix and Hulu and and like Blu-ray releases because they lost the rights to those. Um, but even if you got it digitally, if you get it at the right time, then you could secure that. Actually, a better example would be Alan Wake. I think nope, not Alan Wake. There's another game that they just stopped selling. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, I think. Uh, somebody lost the rights to that, and you like now can't buy it anymore. And I, you, But if you bought it, then you're good. This is more about the servers going down. Um, so, let's see, where was I? Um, so, yeah, it needs to connect to the Internet every X amount of days. To refresh that, you know, just basically say, hey, you know, uh, is this a legitimate copy? And the internet goes, yes, yes, it is. And that prevents piracy and, and you know, it, it makes it so that way, you know, people can't just make a copy of the game and then give it to their friend and circumvent the whole. You know, that's that's how you maintain the value of these things. Um, Razer is suggesting that not all the games require digital rights to be confirmed. But I can't imagine any non-free games would skip that. Because they're basically opening themselves to piracy. And that doesn't really make sense. So, I mean, maybe your free games will be safe. But even those, probably not so much. So, basically, if Sony were to go under tomorrow, this exact same thing would happen to all of your digital PlayStation games. You actually don't own them. They're lost forever. That being said, I'm going to reiterate... That it's not going to happen with these big companies. By the time we get to that point, you're already going to see it coming a mile away. The important lesson here, because this is, I think this is one of the first times this has happened, at least on this scale. Um, the important lesson here is that we should be mindful. You should be mindful where your money goes. Um, you know, in, in this streaming future, in this digital future, we're moving towards, there's going to be a lot of companies now that they don't have to have physical, you know, products on their store shelves. There's going to be a lot of companies popping up that say, Hey, you know, we've got this game for $10 cheaper than everybody else. And it's some company you've never heard of. That is where the risk comes in. You can give them your $10 and you'll get your game. 
And what en- might end up happening is if they shut down, if there's if their subscription service shuts down and nobody buys it up, and there's no way to verify your digital rights, then you lose that product. Again, not going to happen with Sony, not Nintendo. You're fine with that stuff. But what we're going to start seeing is a lot more companies sprouting up, working out deals with these publishers saying, hey, can we, you know, sell your game? And they're going to try their hardest. They're going to, you know, do the Amazon approach. They're going to be like, you know, we'll just take a $10 loss in every single game and, you know, we'll, we'll get market share. You know, we'll, 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 that's how we'll make a whole bunch of money. We'll make Amazon money. And then they end up losing all their money. You know, kind of like uh, Telltale, which I understand is a completely different thing. But um, when Telltale goes under, we don't lose all the Telltale games. When these companies go under, you will lose all the products that you bought from them. So, again, don't freak out about when Ubisoft wants to have their subscription service that Andrew's definitely not going to buy. Don't freak out when all these things and just think like, oh my God, what, what happens when they go under? Then all our games are lost forever. That's not going to happen. By the time they go under, we're going to be on the PlayStation 9 and you won't care about PlayStation 4. It'll be fine. Now, I've, I've gone a long time without looking at chat, so I'm, we're going we're gonna to catch up here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um... <laughs> this is back to the play date. Mark says, literally you can make your own portable Wii for under 150. That is true. Um, let's see. Let's see. Talking a lot about that play, play date. Uh, <laughs> sorry, there's a lot of comments. I, I went on a long tirade. I, I'm just, I just want to make sure uh yeah okay they're talking they were they were talking about the play date and and my let's play of, of pony island back when i did let's plays actually speaking of old let's plays there was there was one let's play that i was uh i was trying to do when i first started recording let's plays uh layers of fear i started recording it and then i just stopped because i'm like you know what i'm not actually afraid in this game because i know all the pop outs so i'm just gonna move on well and and i mean i have a podcast a video game podcast you would think i know what games are coming up especially the ones i like well it turns out layers of fear 2 is coming out today it came out today layers of fear 2 I found this out yesterday. It came out today. It freaking got reviewed yesterday. It got like a 9 out of 10 from freaking uh, IGN. Obviously, I bought it. Played the first half hour. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's Layers of Fear 1, but just better, which is exactly how video games need to be when, when, when you make a sequel. It's freaking amazing. Get Layers of Fear. Get it now. If you haven't played the first one, buy the first one and then buy the second one because it's so good holy shit it's so freaking good and scary and amazing okay so layers of fear 2 i just started playing that looking forward to getting back into that um i beat rage 2 and i i realized what it is about rage 2 that i didn't like and that was that i felt no immersion into the world i was trying to figure it out last week i'm like why don't i like it's not that i didn't like it that was the thing that was messing me up. I'm like, it's not that I don't like this game. What is it about this game that is bothering me? It was that I didn't have any immersion in their world. Zero immersion, except for the, I mean, like, it's the gameplay. The gameplay was king in that game. All the powers you get, all the stuff. It was so much fun to play. And I think that's what was bothering me. Is like, imagine playing in the, imagine if, and, you know, no offense if, you, if you're a brony, uh, or even a Joe brony, uh, you know, if you're not a brony and, and, and one of the greatest games ever released was like my little pony horses revenge or something. And it's an entire game is set in the, my little pony universe, but the gameplay is just like, it's, it's unlike anything you've ever seen. 
It is it is a thousand times better than Last of Us. It's a hundred times, whatever times better than Grand Theft Auto. It's just the greatest game ever. But it's in the My Little Pony universe. That's what like Rage 2 was. It was some of the best shooting I've seen in a game in a while. Awesome powers, beautiful graphics, all this stuff. But man, that story was so forgettable and the the writing was terrible like i didn't care about any i i just beat that game yesterday i think yeah yesterday and i can't tell you i i i know that a a a big mutant guy wanted to wage war on these people and then i killed him that's all I know, it, it it just it was so unremarkable the story and the writing was just awful, um, you know it's, <laughs> it it just, it was that. But that that was my main problem with it, and and I think that, yeah, I think that that, I think that that. But Layers of Fear two, can't wait to get into this one. Uh, it, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good time. So, uh. Before I get going, I have a little bit of an announcement to make. Um, kind of an announcement. I, I, you know what? It's an announcement because I'm going to do this. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this because, uh, you know, one of the things people have been saying is like, oh, what are you going to do with the studio after, you know, the, the podcast is done? Which, by the way, if you don't know, we're going to go to episode 100 and then podcast is over. Um, people have been asking me, what are you going to do with the studio? Are you going to do Let's Plays? No, I, I tried that and I'm like, I don't like it. Uh, are you going to do another podcast? Uh, I, Im- immediately I go, no, I don't really want to start another podcast because, you know, it, it's very draining to produce and work so hard, basically to do everything by yourself. Every week I do all of this by myself and it's very, very draining. Uh, so I can't, but then I it just, I had an idea the other day. I think I was like taking a shower. No, I was driving. I was driving back from Jacksonville to, to St. Pete. And I had this idea and I, ah, uh, I, I shit you not. I, I sat in that car for like an hour and a half in just complete silence thinking about this idea that I, I am now, like I've been obsessing about. Um, it would, it is a new podcast. And what it is, is, um, Basically, it's called Video Game Stories, which, by the way, I'm amazed that there's not another podcast called Video Game Stories. Uh, But it is the interesting anecdotes and entire chronological story of the development and release of a video game. And and each episode is a different video game, varying lengths. Um, It's not going to be on a schedule. There's zero schedule. Uh, You know, I think I'm going to release probably five when when i first you know release uh probably do like one or two a month at the minimum maybe but you know i think taking off that that burden of the schedule will help me create a better product um because i mean like sometimes even with this podcast like some weeks there's just nothing to talk about and you know i think that those episodes while they're you know they're good in my opinion, uh, they're not as good as they can be. Um, and if, if I can just have a little bit more time to work on these things, then I think that I can create a good product. Um, they won't be live. You know, I mean, this is going to be a bare bones podcast because I'm not going to have a Patreon for it. Uh, the Patreon, while I am so immensely thankful for all of the Patreon subscribers, um, it kind of, it almost became a burden because, I was working my, I was working myself to the bone trying to create stuff regularly to both build up Downright Fierce Gaming and to appease and do stuff for the Patreon subscribers because I didn't want to let them down. You know, that was the biggest thing. I just, I didn't want to let them down. But the way I'm, I'm hoping that I can make, you know, have the podcast pay for itself rather than, you know, me pay for the podcast um, will be through premium episodes. So, you know, I'm going to do five episodes, probably, I mean, maybe 10. I don't know. I'm going to do X amount of, let's say I do, let's say I do six. Let's say, uh, actually that's a good number. I'll probably do that. I'm going to do six episodes and three of them would be 
regular free episodes, and three of them would be premium episodes. And they'll be like a dollar each. And hopefully, you know, I can market it right uh, to get on the iTunes new and noteworthy, which there's like a way to do that that I, I didn't do with this show that hopefully, uh, you know, help me out with the other one. Um, but that might, at least with the initial thing, make enough money to sustain the podcast longer, uh, to, you know, pay for the hosting and stuff. And, but that's the boring stuff. The interesting thing is, is the content. So, you know, an example would be, um, one of the examples I posted online was, it was Mario, Mario two, uh, you know, going over the entire story of Mario two's development, uh, the state of, of the video game industry, you know, when it first came out, you know, like maybe talking a little bit about Mario's impact and they're like, well, we definitely got to get another Mario two out there. Um, and going over the fact that not a lot of people know this, but Mario two, the one that we got here in the States is not actually Mario two. They reskin Doki Doki panic, uh, another game that was significantly easier than Mario two because they felt that American audiences couldn't handle the difficulty of Mario two. Uh, but they knew they still needed to release a Mario 2 over here. So they, they did that. And, you know, just covering the, the you know, like I said, the story. Little interesting anecdotes like that. Uh, another one I want to you know, do is Scalebound. You know, we all know that that's kind of a sob story. But, you know, there might be a way for me to kind of piece together all the information. You know, I'm going to I'll reach out to developers. I'll email them. I'll see if I can get any, you know, any information on these dead games that, you know, find out kind of what happened, piece together my own theories maybe about what happened, you know, look at Microsoft statements, look at the studio behind Scalebound statements and, and kind of piece everything together to give you a coherent story of Scalebound, you know, the, the tragically not flawed, but dead game. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. I think um, I, I I I think that this is something that I would really like to make. Not to say I don't I don't like making this show, um, but ultimately, I need to make a show that I would be interested in listening to, and I think I can make something really interesting with this. And I look forward to, to, uh, you know, to seeing what I can put together. And with that, that does it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we do this every Tuesday on uh, facebook.com slash on our fierce gaming. Every Tuesday at 830. You can check out the videos on demand on youtube.com slash on our fierce gaming. And, uh, yeah. I want to thank all of our Patreon subscribers, Mark Mayfield, Tristan Haynes, I want to thank our executive producers, Carolina Jarvis, Brian Kizmetsky, uh, Andrew Facekicker Kirkendall, everybody who's helped out with the podcast, everybody who's just been amazing and just a great support, uh, all of our co-hosts. Just I'm going to thank everybody. Just Oh, and also, I want to thank uh, MC Lars. MC Lars, who has a brand new music video. Uh, he came out with a new music video with... Uh, with Mega Ran called 1984. Uh, I'm going to play that for you. Uh, and also, hopefully, uh, I, I talked to him a little bit. He, he, you know, he's a busy guy. He, he might not be able to do it, but he, he said uh, to let him know, I think uh, he said at the end of this month, uh, or maybe it's middle of June. No, I think he said middle of June, uh, that uh, he might be able to come on for at least part of an episode. So that'd be pretty cool. It would, it would be like webcam and stuff, but yeah, that'd be cool. Anyways, this is MC Lars and Mega Ran with uh, 1983. I'll see you guys next week. Good night. Bye. It finally happened. We made it to 1984. The Cyber Wars and Information Terrorism Act made it legal for our once great country to now be ruled by government programming. All hours of the day, all hours of the night. If you wanted to earn enough crypto to eat, you had to watch TV. And if you wanted to earn the big bucks, you wanted to be a TV star, used as a pawn to control the masses who are poor and live in enclaves like mine at an abandoned airport.
Little did I know that on that day, my friend Megaran and I would change everything.
downright fierce. 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 It's a downright fierce gaming podcast. Play a mad game to talk in mad trash. Subtitle pinned and drop it back. Fat consoles, news, and industry stats. Every week, Josh and the crew go hard with the gaming passion. It's true. It's a downright fierce in the place to be with a custom theme by Lars MC. It's downright fierce, get your game on. 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 Fierceness boom is the bomb. 20 questions, you can't go wrong. Yeah, the other console, Chris implores, but now I can't get the Genesis off the floor. Streaming every Sunday on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook Live, so hit the switch. Got scrub looking up those unknown facts. Helpful as heck, there's a lot for that. Lost the bet, I need a pie. Pepperoni, it tastes so fly and it feels so good to play these games. Game Gear links.